What's up everyone, Fritz here again with another episode of Sneakerhead Ambition. Today we're going to be covering just my general thoughts on the bot market as it currently stands and from where I see it. We will be discussing factors directly related to shoes and we will also discuss some factors that are more related to the economy and kind of where we might be headed over the last four months of this year. As always with what I'm talking about, or most of the time, it is an opinion, right? So this is very subjective. This really is just how I see the market as it currently stands. Uh, it is not just random thoughts though. It is based off checkout logs, my personal experience, and the anecdotal experience of other friends that I have in the space. Today I will not be discussing specific proxy companies and bot companies. Today's video is gonna be more on the overall direction and trends I see in the general market. So before we get into my thoughts and opinions, uh, I do wanna start off by saying I don't think that I'm smarter or more intelligent or better than anybody in this space but I do think I bring a unique skill set and just knowledge base to this area. Um, I have been running the sneaker reselling business for over three years, so I don't know if you all are aware of this, but 80 to 90% of small businesses, which is what all of us are running, uh, they go out of business within the first two years. So if you're making it three, four years down the line, you're clearly doing something right because the majority of the businesses at that point, small businesses have already flamed out, right? Two. I have a master's in business. So I've, again, gone to school in order to learn how to run a company, in order how to keep the books, in order to keep everything running smoothly, not get into too much debt. Uh, I pay my taxes, right? So that is another area. And then also I just, I have a lot of relationships with Nike employees, uh, outlet employees, discount store employees, and the things that I have heard about just general stock numbers, uh, supply chain issues are pretty startling. So we will talk about issues like that that just affect the larger macroeconomic issues in the, in the country and in the world that are without a doubt gonna affect this space. Starting off, I just wanna say that botting has been difficult since the day I started two to three years ago, but it has progressively become more difficult every single year since then. It has gotten more complex, you've needed more resources, there are more bots on the scene. Uh, when I started off, there was pretty much one or two top bots. It was Cyber, Kodai, maybe Wrath, and that kind of held for a long time. There wasn't that much turnover. In my opinion, this has changed, again, because there has been a flood of new bots, a flood of new devs, so there are more people in the space competing. And I also think a big factor was the rise of retail botting over the past year. We can look back to last December when the PS5s came out. I was lucky enough to get 16 of those. eBayo only went ever for me. But again, that has really led to more competition and just more attention to the space as people have flooded in to use those retail bots. While the bots have become a lot better, the proxies have also become a lot better. Well, when I started botting two years ago, a little more than two years ago, there were no private proxy companies, or for, at least to my mind, they, they were not obvious and they were not doing the best out of any of the proxy companies. That has changed a lot. Over the past year, again, we have seen a dramatic rise in the amount of private proxy companies where you can't just get into the Discord, you need to either get an invite or a group buy. And we've also seen the creation of the live-like hybrid metered proxies. So again, the proxies where you're getting a stable IP, but you still have data. You can again go back to the proxy video I made a couple weeks ago if that is not clear. But this has also been a large development and has also made it harder for new botters to get these primetime proxies, therefore making it more difficult to hit. Now this giant cat and mouse game between the bots and the sites has also been amped up by the sites increasing their bot protection. It is much harder now than it was a year or two ago to hit 20, 30 pairs on Yeezy Supply, 20, 30 pair on foot sites because they have upped their anti-bot. It is much harder now to just run the same card over and over again, therefore out of necessity leading to the VCCs, right? Virtual credit cards and different services like that that allow you to bypass that and have way more credit cards than any normal person would ever dream of being able to have. Now we're gonna cover some of the supply chain issues that these larger shoe companies are experiencing. If you watch the news, keep up with this space, regularly go for shoes, go to stores, you're probably aware of the fact that Nike, Adidas, these larger shoe companies have had a lot of issues with their global and local supply chains. This has really been an issue over the past 12 to 18 months. One clear piece of evidence that this is definitely happening is the outrageous amount of drops that have been rescheduled this year. I, I don't have it off the top of my head, but every single month it seems like this year, a major drop that people like take off work for and are planning to go for gets just moved two months down the line. This is clear evidence that they are having issues getting all of their pairs in on time. 
You can also see this issue showing when we look at how many restocks there have been recently online, which quite frankly don't look like normal restocks. They look like the stock that they never got for a particular store like Foot Action or Champs. Another thing that I'm seeing that quite frankly is very unusual that I haven't seen in three years is that Nike outlets, Nike outlets right now are getting some shoes like I saw the other day, the Electro Ones. I'm not saying that's the biggest drop of the year, but at a Nike outlet, they had those um, full size run. That is not usual or not a typical move by Nike. So I think right now when they're getting some of these shoes in late, they're just going direct to consumer and putting them in their store. If you don't go to outlets often and you're more of a foot store like Foot Locker, Champs, Finish Line type of shopper, if you go regularly enough too, you're probably seeing the fact that there are a lot of erratic and just random restocks happening on just random days of the week. This to me, again, shows that they are just getting that late trickle of these shoes in that never made it out on time for the original drop. Next, we'll talk about some economic conditions and issues that I think are just very relevant to the next couple months and next year. One large factor that I think is gonna to contribute to maybe a slight downturn or maybe some uncertainty is the fact that for the first time in over a year, year, year and a half, school is going to be back in session, full swing. Now, I know that some have been in school for the past year or maybe virtual, but let's be real. If you are serious about reselling and you are running bots, when virtual school was going on, you were not paying attention to school, you were botting. So this is again, all just to say that a lot of individuals who've had a lot of free time over the past two years, pretty much, aren't gonna have nearly as much. So that will change. Maybe devs aren't able to work as much. People aren't able to run as much during the week. All of that will play a factor. While I know that this space is extremely young, there are also a lot of middle-aged adults, older adults in this space, and just in general, a lot of adults are going back to work now full-time too for the first time in a long time. This is just overall gonna result in a lot less people just being at home, sitting around from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern time, which is a big time for drops. So that is just gonna be a little less crowded and hopefully a little easier for those of us who are still able to run. Another good indicator to pay attention to to just gauge the overall health of the sneaker market would be bot prices. Now, it is mid to late August 2021 right now. I think bot prices have bottomed for the year. They were extremely low a couple weeks ago and have come up just a little over the past couple weeks, but they are really low right now. It is important though to remember that this is following 12 to 18 months of extreme inflation on those bot prices, right? We hit all time highs for a long time, pretty much all of the beginning of this year. Another thing to think about, and I don't know how much y'all think about this, that inflation of those prices directly coincided with people being handed stimulus checks several times. I can't tell you how many people on Twitter I saw say, get my stimulus check, buy in Balco. So that's something to consider. Right? I don't think that that money, or I know for the most part that that money is not just gonna be continued to be handed out. So it might be a good idea right now to just read the market as it is and buy a bot because I don't think that they're gonna be this cheap again. Another reason why I really think that the stimulus checks and just that influx of cash that most people were given has affected this or will affect it is just the fact that every time a stimulus check went out, I saw my sales get a significant increase. I'm not saying that Americans would waste their money that they need for a mortgage on shoes, but they might, but that money is not coming anymore. So again, just pay attention to your general sales volume, the overall sales volume, and where that money is going, and if it's continuing to flood into sneakers. Something I will also be watching extremely closely, and I personally think we've already started to see this happen, is I do believe that it's possible over the next year that we will see the time that's needed to hold a shoe to see a significant profit is going to decrease. Now, I say this because again, if there's trillions of dollars printed, the price of things go up because there is so much more money in circulation. I do realize that the Jordan 4 Oreos that released relatively uh, recently, but a month or two ago, um, I do realize that that is a prime time colorway and a great shoe, but I think you kind of see that already in the fact that that price has already started to climb up rather quickly. You can see this if you really pay attention at the grocery store, um, pay attention to Postmates, DoorDash, all of these prices are slowly creeping up. And again, that affects all goods when there is just trillions of dollars being pumped into an economy. 
Another thing to consider too is that we are, after this August back to school rush, we will enter September and October, early November, which is the lowest sales time of the year for sneakers. That is not to say that there aren't good releases, but it is always important to keep in mind the times of the year when most shoes are sold. So that is a little lull in the sales volume, but then we've got November, December to finish out the year strong. Anyways, wrapping things up, those are my thoughts on the bot market where it currently stands. As always, if you all enjoyed the video, have any questions, comments, would like to debate me on any of these topics, I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. But other than that, just check back next week. I should have a live cop up in another episode. Until then, see you all next time.